What's up everyone? This is Mars Man here and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. In this video, we break down episode six of the Halo TV show and boy, it's an interesting one, but I can't do it alone because alongside with me as always is the Mars Man Gaming crew and to my left is Langella Kill. What's up everybody? And to my right is Haki. Hey guys. I know I switched it up a little bit. I know normally you guys are Hockey's to my left and Langella kills to my right. Whatever it works is the best way going forward. But guys, episode six is here. It, it came out on Thursday. We, we, uh, we're we filming this on a Friday. So it's been a day after because to be honest, I had to let it sink in a little. I, I could, I kind of felt a little weary, a little weird after watching the episode. And it took, took me some time to come up with some sort of a rating. But I kind of, before we get to our official ratings, uh, this is our non-spoiler section. So we're going to do our very best to, to not spoil the episode for anyone that wants to go and watch it. Um, we're just going to provide our general thoughts and then jump into our official ratings of the episode. And then in the second half of the video, we're going to talk about our spoiled, uh, spoiler discussions where we get to rant and rave as much as we want to, and it's going to get interesting. So let's start off with a non-spoiler discussion with, like I mentioned before, our general thoughts. And, and I'll, I'll kind of start us off. Um, generally... I wasn't really the biggest fan of this episode. Um, now, granted, I, do I think it's as bad as some other ones? No, it's not. Like, let's let's be honest, guys. Episode two and episode three were on the garbage heap levels of episodes, um, and I honestly uh, was was not. I, I really was hoping the show would never go back to that point because it was a dark time, indeed. This this episode did not get to that point, um, but it was and definitely a step backward. <laughs> From what we saw with episode five um because you know episode five was just epic right if you really think about it episode five was the way we want halo tv show to be where it has action packed it has some drama intertwined with it um and there was a lot of alien exposure a lot of just a lot of things you saw from halo that make us like the, the game in the first place but episode six did did like opposite of that direction and now granted i guess you would say this is a a politics episode, uh, episode filler episode, whatever you want to call it, because it, it doesn't really have any action whatsoever. It's all politics, and it's uh, just not really necessary. My cup of tea. I'm never. I'm not against episodes that just go into that delve into politics because that kind of does drive stories too. <laughs> but I do like to see some like tension and some combat, and this episode didn't really provide that for me. So. I was a little weary about it. So I kind of want to get you guys' opinion. Uh, Angelica, what did you think about this episode, just in general, before we get to our official ratings? Yeah, disappointing. I was surprised to hear a bunch of critics um, kind of enjoyed the episode and, and gave it some, some I'm not going to say high praise, but positive praise. And I did not feel that way. I felt this was a disappointing episode, and we'll dive into the reasons why. Um but like you mentioned, politics are not a bad thing. I don't. I wouldn't call this a filler episode because it did drive the plot forward. Fillers usually means um, that it doesn't drive the plot at all. But there was some another cringeworthy moment in this week's episode, and just uh, just some things I really just don't like. The writers are, are pushing some of these characters that continue to make me uninterested in the show. Unfortunately. Yeah, I I agree with you on that, Haki. What did you think? about this episode yeah i think we're all in agreement it uh big step back from from last week's episode um it just wasn't uh, intriguing I, I just i didn't i didn't enjoy watching it you know uh, my day off is on thursday and you know after last week's like action pack i'm sitting here thursday and i decided to start off my thursday by watching halo and it just just dampened the mood you know it just wasn't uh it, it's not it's not action man it's it's a drama series to me at this point and it's just uh it's disappointing man i want to see master chief in action no i agree dude and 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 honestly like it's it's disappointing because you came off on such a high note on the last episode and all of a sudden this is what we get and i i don't like to brag but i did mention that this was going to happen i said last week i was like great episode a lot of action a lot of money was spent on cgi and I said, they're going to save it. They're going to start budgeting the money again, start cutting back on some action sequences and get a lot of chief with no helmet on. And 
that's exactly what we got. And there's like you're wait, you're we're just itching and waiting for when they're gonna really dive into the cash again. Um, because apparently 90 million is not enough for a show. Uh, so you know, <laughs> it's you know, wow, it's like wow. a, getting a small loan of a million dollars type of deal. <laughs> um, and I, I so <laughs> oh, can I just can I just say yeah, this? Go ahead. Just kind of piggyback off the uh, before we go into our scores, Polygon, right? And Pablo Schreiber shared this story two hours ago. Listen to this headline and just and it kind of just and I'm not bashing people who enjoyed the episode. I just need to understand why. You guys should put in the comments why you did enjoy it because I just don't see it. And the headline for this article that Pablo Schreiber, who plays Master Chief. The Halo show is finally making a case for its Master Chief is the name of the headline. And also Master Chief beats Moon Knight at its own game. And I just, it just, I'm numb to the, I I like, I can't fathom. And I'm going to dive through the article again, but just even seeing that headline makes me scratch my head. And I don't, you don't dive into, hey, this is what the article is saying just on a headline. But that headline is just, I just don't understand it. Dude, I mean, Polygon. Right, we'll go into this, it, but I just wanted to throw that out there for kind of showing like critics let's, might be yeah, thinking differently than us. Let, let's go to the side. Like, I, I can't tell if we want to jump into that right now. We want to jump into the spoilers, but I, I, I'll, I'll mention this. Yeah, maybe Polygon, we for the discussion. I don't know. I, I can mention this because I'm not going to spoil anything, but yeah. I'll mention the fact that Polygon is the epitome of doing everything opposite what the popular majority think. Like that, that's literally what their bread and butter is. Them. Kotaku are literally identical and basically what's the popular opinion that everyone has well let's be the exact opposite of that because we want to try to be different and that's literally what I noticed when I heard when I hear that title because no one in their right mind is saying this is the master chief that we've been itching for nobody is saying that like no, yeah. I, I I dive into every content creator out there. Like I, I can bash I, on I can bash on Polygon, yeah. but there's another one shared by Pablo Schreiber. Games Radar. Games Halo Radar. Episode Six review, a breathless episode. That's the show's best yet. What are you? Are we a crack? Well, you I mean, a let's crack. go. Let's give our scores, man. Because like, yeah, let's, uh, like that's just, that's up, what we're talking I'm about. Right up now. So okay. So yeah. hockey, I, I keep bragging on you here because. Of, you're, you're the most optimistic, the most optimistic of all of us. One more? Do you want one more before? You get oh it? yeah, let's go. Dude. Washington yeah. Post: oh. The latest Halo episodes deliver on the show's initial promise of what? No action. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, that's what. <laughs> you know, some article. Right. Pablo uh, so, so hockey, hockey's getting, yeah. hockey's getting, hockey's getting fired up here. So hockey, <laughs> you have been the most optimistic of the three of us here about, you know your ratings and you you've been honest saying a lot of your ratings were based off of games and you know like your rate that's a big thing about all three of us is that our it's all opinion so we may have different ratings but we could all be similar in a lot of our feelings but yeah the ratings are just based on on what we think based on our own criteria so hockey i kind of want to hear your first your your rating first tell me why you picked that rating so go ahead tell us what you thought about episode six of this tv show yeah, so again, uh, for the for the Marsman gaming audience, my ratings, I kind of messed up in the beginning. My <laughs> rating is like minus two or minus three <laughs> of whatever these guys say is pretty much on point. So um, I've been in the low sevens for the worst episode so far. And then the high, you know, I think last week I gave it a high seven. Um, that was the best episode last week by far. I have no idea what the Washington Post is talking about or who's writing those articles. They probably never played a Halo game either, just like the the writers of of uh, this show. But yeah, I'm, I'm at like a seven one, seven two. Like the episode was just not good. It was probably the, you know, it, it definitely I think beat out the two, you know, episode two and three where we had the really really weird stuff going on, like the the kids kissing and the and the the you know scientists trying to kiss the the dead clone and stuff like that or, or the clone. Uh, it, it just wasn't a good, it wasn't a good episode. I, I understand, um, moving the story, um, and, and, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, adding on to story arcs and, and characters, but again, man, this is Halo. This is about Master Chief. Uh, the entire Halo saga, like, is all about action or at least action with story. Any mm-hmm. time. I don't even think Chief was in full gear, this entire episode, right? Am I nope. right? Not, not at all. 
not at all dude didn't even have his armor on like he held his helmet for 10 seconds like was that that was just to satisfy the real it's a tease it's like a tease helmet yeah dude it was just it wasn't a good episode like and and it like it had one cool part for me which i'll get into in the spoiler section or when we you know talk about it and then that part was ruined by just like weird stuff you know yeah this wasn't Aki, good. just just for the audience sake average to you is seven right mm-hmm. yeah like average is seven like really okay. bad, you know and then that and again i was going off of off of you know, no i know but your critique is seven is average Seven is like yeah, seven's like average, and then yeah. okay. Five, four, well, two, once you get to once you get to like an eight, that's like a good, and then you get to like nine. Yeah, just like just for eight. context on your yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. We're just seven's saying for average, context purposes. Yeah. Seven's average, yeah. eight is good, nine is great, ten is amazing, like yep. outstanding, like the Halo three and Halo two. That's ten yeah. outstanding, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it just this week it didn't do good for me, man. It was just it was bad. I feel you, man. So Langella kill what so yeah. let's, let's all get some context the jail kill is more of the lower grader of the yeah, three of yeah. us here so let's yeah and so I'll, let's, I'll give context like i have every week a five to me is average and i have this episode again similar mindset to hockey i think this beats episode two and three but again i do think a lot of critics because of how some of these episodes how poorly they were are are a little numb to what good is Right. Like if you watch other shows, like you can kind of get a feeling of what a good show is. Right. So to me, I can't, you know, like hockey said, he has his average at seven uh, out of 10 and it's a 7.2. So I'm similar. I'm at a 5.8 for this episode. So it's slightly above average. And because uh, I do think that they give you more insight on, you know, the blessed ones, they give you more insight um, about the, the dirty deeds that Halsey has done in her past and kind of done a better job of politics than they did in episode two and three. Um, But the bad parts, man, guys, it's so sad uh, for me to say this, but I do not like Master Chief. I don't like him as a character in this show, and it breaks me because Master Chief is one of the best gaming characters of all time. And I just think their depiction of him is poor, and it's not improving. And I don't even want to call him Master Chief. I just want to call him John at this point. Because there's two versions of this this character that Pablo Schreiber plays. There's the Master Chief, which is the one I enjoy, which is becoming more and more rare that we see. And then there's this guy, John. And we're seeing a lot more of John than we are of Master Chief. No, I said I, go, I can agree with both your takes on this. And, uh, you know, when I'm looking at this episode, I agree with both of you. It's better than episode two and better than episode three, which are both cringe fests and... Uh, and honestly, yeah, we know what we didn't see any Master Cheeks this episode, which was already a plus compared to what we had seen in previous ones. But I can agree with both of you that, you know, just like Langelico said, it's like a lot of people are getting numb to the fact that, like, this show overall has not been great. Like, it's been average at best. And unfortunately, people are getting numb to that fact. So anytime they get a glimmer of a positive, they elevated and unfortunately it's like yeah, I, we're not i'm not gonna do any spoilers but like the ending of the show is a, is a pretty big moment and yeah. because of that ending it elevated the entire episode and it's like imagine not having that ending. like what how would you feel about this episode if you didn't have that and i think a lot of people kind of mistake that ending being like oh that's what makes this the best like one of the better episodes it's like no it's not it's really not and and when i'm looking at in comparison you know yeah it's better than episode two and three but in my opinion i'm having this on par with episode four and uh, my rating for that one is going to share this this one as well and i gave that episode a six i'm going to stick with that as well i'm going to stay i'm going to say this episode is a six episode four and this one share a lot of similarities in a lot of ways like a lot of it was politics for the most part but one thing that i think episode four i think did a better job at this one was it actually had some action it had the soren quan arc that actually had like you know soren doing some cool things but this episode did something that i didn't think that the show was capable of doing it didn't have quan the entire time and it actually made the episode like not stupid in a lot of ways, but then there are some things that does, it makes you cringe a little, which yeah. that, that's why it doesn't elevate itself past episode four because episode four had Quan in it. 
a lot of Quan, and that's what d- d- downgraded it for me. But this one had no Quan. It had had a millisecond of Quan. It, which they had, had to like throw that nugget in there <laughs> just to just to add just to have her still as a character. But even with that being the case, it like didn't immediately didn't have her, and it made me kind of say, all right, the le- worst character of all of them is not in it. So at least then it's like okay, it kind of elevates the episode a little. Um, but I agree. I think there are some things that they did well on, like as in like some of the politicking was way better flushed out than that episode than compared to two and three. The dialogue made sense in a lot more cases in this one compared to the other ones. Um, you really felt a tension in the room when it comes to a lot of the issues that were growing. Um, but they're defeating the purpose of every gaming and anime show and movie out there and you're disregarding characters that were developed before the show came out. Like, what I mean by that, Master Chief is not the same Master Chief. And boy, that title that I think IGN gave when they first reviewed this this show was, this is not this is not your dad's Master Chief, is now ringing in my ears higher than ever before. And it's just unfortunate because you have a good opportunity. I think Publish Driver is not a bad actor. But I also think that like we're not getting John one one seven. We're getting Pablo Shriver as the as Master Chief, and it's not it's not realistic. It's not realistic to what Master Chief is as a character. And I just think that it's just getting too outlandish. And we're gonna get more into a spoiler discussion. What I what we all liked and disliked. But for my rating, I'm giving this a six, and it just gets a six. I think it's a lower end of six. Like it it's borderline five point nine for me. And I think because. When I make a comparison to episode four, I think episode four is better than this one is, but I just think that it's close enough that I'll I'll keep it consistent. I think it's a six for me. And six, I guess in my case, uh, I guess I would still be similar to Angelic Hill. I think five is an average. Six is like above average slightly. And that's why I would give it a six because, yeah, you know what? It's not the worst thing I've seen, but it's not the greatest. And if I was going to put all the episodes in order, Episode probably episode three would be episode two and three are battling for the worst things on the planet Earth. I think episode three was probably worse. Episode two after that, then yeah. you're getting to then you're getting to six, four, one, and five. Like I think that's yeah. that's what I'm looking at in my rankings of where I think these episodes have landed so far. Yeah. And and I think that is, I think that's kind of accurate in my opinion. I, granted, what and I watched a bunch of content creators and they were all like, "This is a great episode." I'm like. Ha- how like how yeah. is this and and it kind of really scares me it kind of scares me because i'm like am i a pessimist am i a guy that's sitting there like this episode's not good like and i maybe i'm like looking at this too negatively to a certain extent but i'm also sitting here like i i honestly have not been radical in a lot of my points and i don't think any of us have been radical but i'm also like we're we're sitting here like looking at more on the average of like we're on the negative side of this and it's kind of interesting because I honestly don't think we're too far off from, you know, just being realistic. Like, we that's all why know. I want to know. I, I want to hear why, you know, if fans agree with those content creators, let us know why. Yeah. And, and I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, maybe I need to be enlightened. I agree. Listen, I think, and that's such a good point on Jill Kill. If you do not agree with us, please make sure you comment that in the comments below because I want to see what your opinion is. If you liked the episode, if you didn't like it, tell us tell us why and if you you know if if you think we're nuts tell us why you think we're nuts and explain it because maybe we're missing something here but that's going to be the end of the non-spoiler discussion and like i said before comment below if you have a different take on this episode or just a show in general because we'd love to hear it um and secondly please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content if you aren't subscribed already we do a lot of streams a lot of content videos a lot of roundtable discussions like this We've been doing at least one of these a week on the Halo TV show, but we do all these on, on a lot of different topics. Um, and I'm sure when the episode, when the season ends, we're going to have a full season review as well as some new, some stuff on upcoming gaming news that's coming around the corner, like in June when E3 was supposed to be around. But we'll save that for another video. But like I said, if you want to hear about our discussions on the spoiler review, please stick around to the second half. But if not... Thank you for watching and tell us what you guys think about the episode. Now on to the spoiler discussion. Well, guys, spoiler discussion here. And uh, I didn't like this episode that much. It was an average episode for me at, at best. And uh, I had a lot of things to say about it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, 
So just like we normally do in our in our roundtable spoiler discussions, I break down the episode into three sections, usually the first 20 minutes, middle 20 minutes, and the last 20 minutes. And it's kind of funny because when you look at the overall time stamp of this show, it's getting smaller and smaller. This was the second shortest episode of the bunch. Last week's, of course, the best one with all the money was being spent was the shortest with 43 minutes on the clock. And this was around 48 minutes. So, you know, for a episode for a show that's not on TV, you're getting like it's almost like commercial breaks. Like, and it's kind of like interesting because you know, when you go watch an hour long show, you get you get generally it's 40 something minutes because you got commercial breaks in between. But this is on streaming service, so there's no reason to have commercial breaks, but you know, they just gotta cut that stuff off a little yeah. bit at a time. And so when you're looking at the first 20-ish minutes. The big thing, I, I'll break this down into different sections. Um, I'll start off with the uh, very interesting scene of Chief gaining, kind of remembering some stuff, him getting super, super angrier and angrier, right? And him trying to kill Dr. Halsey. And basically this whole good thing, it's set premise where, you know, Chief is sitting there mean mugging, you know, from a, from a far away, looking at Chief, looking at Halsey just like, and just remembering things that he got from when he's touching the artifact. And some of the things he remembers is the fact that Halsey was picking Spartans when they're kids and replacing them with flash clones, which basically are like broken down from within and they basically died pretty quickly. Uh, and so in essence, he kind of remembers these things. And it's just like, damn it. Like this, this, this lady is still alive after he tried to super puncture in the face and she got shut down, which was a cringe, cringe worthy by itself. And so he's sitting there just like wanting to knock her out. Kai is really, really hurt. She's barely surviving. And so he's like sitting there barely like there. And then he gets to the point where he finally gets his chance to try to like isolate Halsey and do something. And what he does is he locks her in this room where he starts going on this rant telling Cortana, you know, about this, the person who created all, all these ships and says, yes. well, he had one. He had one failsafe, one spot that was unable to basically get broken out of, and that was like the place where they have the nuclear power. Um, and that was like the weird thing is he was so brilliant and all this stuff, but that was the one place he never really found the failsafe to keep intact. And he traps her in there and he starts busting open a nuclear energy and he's trying to set her up to get killed. And the whole premise of this was he was trying to find out what what could Cortana do to him? Like, could she control him completely or not? And some people were interested in saying, wow, that was a smart idea, Chief, because you found out exactly what Cor what could Cortana do and what couldn't. But at the same time, I'm also thinking this is nothing like Master Chief in any way, shape, or form at all. Like, if this was Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, mm -hmm. I'd be like, wow, Pablo Shriver is doing one hell of a job yeah. as Commander Shepard, but this is not. Commander Shepard, this is Master Chief, and he's showing more emotion than ever, sly when he's talking. Chief doesn't do these things, right? And obviously the scene itself is like tension. We all know she calls he was not dying. We all know that's not going to happen, but it kind of gives the audience like, oh my God, like Chief's like going like crazy right now. Like he, he tried the super punch Halsey in the last episode, and now he's straight up just going to nuke her ass in this episode. Like, what the heck is going on? And it finally ends with Cortana saying, like, gee, I can't control you. I could turn you off, but I can't control you completely. You don't let her die. Like, you know, like she can't control you. And then he's just like, fine, bust open the door, brings her out. And so he's like, that's not the last time, uh, you know, we're dealing with this. And next time I deal with it, you won't be able to get away. Like, and just pieces out. So it's kind of like one of those weird scenes where it's like, yeah, you know what? It's, it could be sly in some cases, but it's not Master Chief. So at the end of the day, it's like it kind of defeats the purpose of it because it's the Master Chief doing it, right? That's the whole point. So I kind of want to get your guys' opinion because I I was weirded out by this because, yeah, you know what? It's it's interesting, I guess, in a way, but it's really not, in my opinion. It kind of just makes me not like this story arc more because it's like it's not cheap. Yeah, yeah. it adds tension to the story, but it's also not cheap. Um, and it's also not lore accurate at all. So it just makes me as a Halo nerd to be like, it's not – this doesn't happen like this. This none of this is even happening. It's not character development because it just doesn't happen and it's not chief. So Langella kill, let's go with you first here. Cause I know you're adamantly against this, uh, this scene for sure. Um, what do you think about this? 
I think you nailed it. I, I'll just piggyback on what you said. I mean, I think this was a really cool scene. If this show is not about Master Chief, like if this was a other sci-fi or like you mentioned, like maybe Mass Effect, um, I think it'd be a really cool scene. Um, but again, this is supposed to be Master Chief, so it doesn't make sense to me um, how he's so emotionally shot. He's emotionally shot. And he gets even worse as the episode goes along. Um, now, I understand it. If you're a normal person watching this, had no idea what Halo is and no idea what Master Chief is like, you're thinking, well, this is a reasonable way to feel, right? And it was a little cool thing how he kind of tested Cortana. But I just, again, it's hard for me to connect with it because it's something I just don't see Master Chief ever doing. No. Um, and, and that's my problem. I, it's hard to connect with that moment. Um, but I am going to say... It's just, it's hard. It's just so hard to get behind this, this Master Chief and the Silver Timeline BS uh, call is like, yeah, like it's a different timeline, but like, damn, this is completely different. Um, and I keep going back to examples over the last few, like The Witcher. Um, you know, I'm not a guy who's a completely against writers going, like separating themselves a little bit from the lore. Um, I don't think like it's a, it's a, complete no-go for me so i'm not trying to tell the audience like hey if it's not lore accurate it's stupid um i'm not that kind of guy but you have to connect the main characters as close to those people because that's why they like me. um and the witcher does a much you know like Geralt um and henry cavall do a much better job of connecting those characters and i really like the witcher um and they go off on the lore so like they don't go exactly how the lore goes right but i'm still a fan so, like, I could be the same thing with this, but, like, Chief has to be a little closer to what he, like, what the Master Chief is, and he's not. Yeah, and, and you know what, and I, I'm going to do a whole content video about, you know, gaming shows and movies that, you know, why they work, why they don't. But one of the key themes about what we notice is that when, when shows and movies break character, right, that's what ruins yeah. momentum of these things. And that's why... A lot of people, and I'm not the only one, we're not the only one here that are not happy with the show because you're breaking character. You're not, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And not saying like, yeah, you know what? You make your own timeline. That's, that's not a big deal. But you, you're changing characters. Characters are what drive these things going forward. If you were to have, and I, I, like I said, I want to ruin my whole content video plan, but I'll just give an aspect of it. Sonic the Hedgehog is killing it in the market right now, killing it in yeah. movie theaters. No one would have thought Sonic the freaking Hedgehog was yeah. going to be a top gaming movie of all time. Not talking of the year, of all time. And it's not following the story of the game, like, oh, we're on Green Hill Zone. We got to start yeah. spinning, collecting rings. That's not, what, how, that's not what's happening in the movie. What they're doing is they're taking the actual character exactly the way it is in the games and putting them in a real-life scenario. And then you're getting people to play real people playing actor or game characters. Yeah. Like they did. Like I don't know. They, they, they the nailed movie. Sonic. They nailed yeah. Sonic with their writing and they nailed the villain. They, they you got and there you go. play Egg, Eggman and, and, you, and you, get, you get tails and you get knuckles and all that. And you, you got decent yeah. story writing. Yeah, so like, exactly. it doesn't stick with the story. Exactly. You nailed it. Like, but they nailed Sonic and they did a good job with the villain. And it's just annoying because it's like, that's as simple as it is. You keep the characters the way they are, and then you can you can put them in any store you want as long as it like it fits their character. Like Sonic is different than Master Chief. Like you can't put yeah. Master Chief in the same thing, but you you could do the idea it. is the same. You could do you could take the character, keep them keep them consistent, and then you can put them in any makeshift adaption story as you want, and it'll work. Like that's just a, that's why that's why and I like I said I can go the whole content. That's why Uncharted's not doing well, because Uncharted changed characters, and that's not Nathan Drake. Like, I'm sorry, it's not Nathan Drake, and that's why he's failing, right? But hockey, we, I, I could keep going on a tangent on this, but what did you think about that first part with Chief and like trying to basically annihilate Halsey and everyone? It's like a, it's kind of like a, 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 you know, uh, you know, 
a Three Stooges act where he tries to find a new way to kill Halsey every week. It kind of feels like yeah. so, or Tom and Jerry basically yeah, every week trying to find a, a way one. to kill Halsey. Yeah. <laughs> so this week we try to try to nuke her. Let's find out next week yeah. what, what we're trying to do this time. So the, what do you think of Road Runner? Yeah, Halsey's a Road Runner. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, it 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 just it didn't make sense. You know, uh, I don't think the silver timeline is is an excuse for them. You know, just not hitting it right with Master Chief. I just. It's just way, way, way too much emotion. Um, I mean, they had a chance to, I mean, they were given Master Chief. They had a chance to really, really nail it. I think you guys were preaching when you said, you know, keep the character, put him in a storyline and let the character just, you know, work, you know? Uh, and they just didn't do it, man. Uh, the concept was cool, but again, it, that's just not Master Chief. Like all the emotion, all that stuff, that's just not Master Chief. Uh, that, that, that's that, I mean again I don't have a ton of ton to say you guys hit it yeah. around the head but uh, it's just not Master Chief cool concept but it, how about I I think and, and let's go to the next time but I think they nailed Cortana I mean I don't know what Cortana, you guys think yeah, I think Cortana is more well written than than the rest yeah, of them. how about this like okay so not only did you did you have the same voice act actress that's great and then you actually write her well you write mm-hmm. exactly the way her character is and people like it like. Like, how about this? You take the other Spartans, you keep them the way that Spartans are supposed to be, even though these aren't the actual characters that they're based off of. Like, these are these are new characters. You mean yeah, and I like them. You made brand new characters, and you copy the way the blue team from the actual games and books is supposed to be, and they're they're, they're the most like Soren is the most similar to the lore character that he is. Guess what? People like him, but you you change up all these other key characters, and people don't like them as much because they aren't keeping the character now let's go to the next part and this is the last section of of, of the part one chief's interrogation great great writing oh congratulations so so basically uh you know chief is basically going to go talk with maki maki at the end of the last episode was you know we got to make it look real so what they do what they do do the exact opposite they throw her down in a jaw pod with no bruises nothing and she tries to make the case that I was taken hostage since I was a kid. They just dropped me off for some reason because I guess they didn't need me anymore. Dropped her off. They, you know, the UNSC picks her up. And now they're just kind of like investigating her. Like, what the heck is she, like, what's going on with her? So she's human, all this stuff. Miranda starts using her to talk about, uh, uh, you know, saying Healy um, and all this stuff is going on. Then Chief's walking in there. All the guards like, yo, Chief, give her hell. Like, you know, I'll just give her hell, Chief. She goes in there and interrogates her. And honestly, the very beginning of it, it kind of makes sense where it's like, she's like, so I'm just supposed to believe that you're just some, some nobody that they just dropped off magically when everyone else gets wiped, you know, chief in the beginning of the whole episode was taking it upon himself to feel like he failed because he lost the, the lost the artifact. People die. A lot of people died. 150 ish people died. And, you know, Captain Key was like, no, it's not a big deal. But chief is like, you can tell he's like kind of feeling like I failed. Right. And he's like, all these people died, but you are alive. They, they killed all these people, but they kept some random chick alive. Why is that? They start going into the whole discussion about, you know, I'm like you. I'm a blessed one like you. All this stuff. And Chief starts to get like real emotional, like in this whole situation. Now, one thing that's important to remember is that he starts to kind of feel this connection that's being built between them, that they're both blessed ones that and she kind of starts like talking about like the importance of this artifact and that you know that they can work together to kind of use it and understand it and all this all this other side chatter but overall i felt as if the scene was it 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 didn't need to happen with chief you could have had this with captain keys captain keys could have been walking in that room and he could have did the interrogation or you could have anybody else be the one that does that and chief could be just like you know, just sitting in the back watching because, yeah, make it intriguing. Make it be like he 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 is hearing this, that she has all these powers that he has. And now it makes it like he feels connected to her. So that if anything happens to her, it's like I feel this connection because it, we're both similar versus like he gets all emotional. He's not like himself. All this dumb stuff that gets added in. And it's just it kind of just just doesn't feel as impactful. I, I kind of just feel like this is just stupid added on to just bring tension and having chief with no fa- no mask on or anything, just to just add another scene with him. Nothing on like, that's just a good kind of felt like, 
Like, use this to develop all the characters. You, you could have used Miranda. Have, remember, guys, like, we forget Miranda was supposed to be the lead uh, saying Healy person and the one that would never talk with those that are, you know, rep, like, remember, she was the one that was sent to go talk to Quan, right, in the first episode, and she failed miserably. Yeah. You know, yeah. why is Chief walking in there and interrogating well, when because Maki, Maki said she will only talk. She only talk to. She only so you and she's like, you know what? Let's, let's do, just it. do what she said. Yeah, let's do whatever, whatever she wants. wants. Whatever she wants. She's just some random person who is, yeah. you know, yeah, you know what? We'll we'll bring you Master Chief Petty Officer, the top, yeah. the head of the Spartans. We'll just call him in there to come talk to you. Yeah. He's got he's got a lot of free time. Just let him go talk to you. You know, it's just stupid. It just kind of felt like it was just redundant. Like, so Haki, I kind of want to get your opinion on this first. What did you think about this this little scene? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm with you. I didn't think it needed to be Chief. I thought it was going to be uh, Miranda Keys. I, I thought because she knew the San Healy or whatever language, I, I thought it was going to be her. And I thought she was going to interrogate her, try and figure out, you know, everything that she knew, you know, uh, being locked up or being a prisoner um, of the Covenant. But it was just, it was just weird. It just it was just added for drama. I think again, it's, this is turning into a, a drama series, uh, less action, unfortunately. Um, and again, we just, it's just more and more emotion from chief, which it, yeah, it's not chief. It's just not chief. You know, mm-hmm. um, it could have been done literally by anyone else. The Admiral, Miranda Keys, yep. Captain Keys, anyone, literally anyone. Yeah. How about this? How about, she's know. like, I want to talk to the, D- I want to talk to chief. I'm like, no, yeah like no no yeah, you're, you're talking not, to me or, or, or I, I think like creating i agree with you like creating tension with one of the keys or like you said the admiral trying mm-hmm. to get information from her and then and her stonewalling them saying that i only will only speak to chief maybe you know yeah. and have how about talk, that, start the conversation with somebody else and yeah be like, and then only, like and then, then like, okay. they get to the artifact then they like, have the discussion like should we send chief in yeah. and then create that okay maybe we should but we'll have someone oh, in there or like something but, like, why would you just sit, oh, you know, just put him in there. You know, we don't know what she is. We don't know give, how dangerous give her she chief. is. Give yeah. her hell, chief. Like, shut up. I, I like, so it was just yeah. unnecessary, man. I mean, I'll just make it quick. Like, yeah. it's just another scene that we have to see Pablo Shriver's face. We have to see Chief grunting, you know, whatever, you know, mean mugging. Um, and actually, you know, this episode, I don't want to bash it too hard because, like, you know, we talked about, I think Chief's emotions actually go way off the haywire after this. Um, this is actually the more calm chief. So I can't say he was emotionally unstable, but it gets worse as he has to go along. But again, it's just like forcing, we need chief to, you know, be undressed and talking to her. And, you know, they do go into the blessed one, which I do find again, pushing their, their story arc, um, talking about how they're similar. Um, but you know, that's all I took from it. Yeah. I, so the next part is, so we're now in the second 20 minutes. Uh, first thing I kind of want to discuss is Chief is telling Kai about the truth of the Spartan program. So he knows the truth that basically they're abducted as kids, that they basically, you know, that they had a Flash clone that takes their place, they die, and so that the parents think they died off, and that's why they go really go investigate them, all this stuff. Um, and so Chief tells Kai, who was a member really hurt at the very beginning, tells her the truth. One of the things I think Angry Joe Show kind of mentioned, I kind of also agree with, they're like, so Kai is really struggling to understand her emotions, right? And she clearly had an issue in the last episode where she had like a panic attack and she didn't know how to handle it. And she almost died in the very beginning. So what's the first thing you do? You tell her a very, really (laughs) messed up story about the smart program to get them extremely emotionally invested in it. And so like that, like the first thing you do is what she's okay, what she's stabilized. Like, oh, hey, Kai, yeah. So you were cloned and your parents think you're dead and you're actually you were abducted since you were seven. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Just want to give you that little that notice. And, you know, it was kind of like, so like kind of just thinking about it, like that's stupid. But so Kai kind of takes it as a champion. She's like, she's like, oh, I got to go do something. And she's like, listen, I, I'm dealing with that right now. Don't worry. But, and she's like, all right, what about the other Spartans? She's like, no. And he's like, I'll tell them when I feel like they're ready. Um, now, granted, I'm not going to like, I-, I could be the lore chief and just be like, nope, nope, nope. Because I know that Halsey in the actual lore, Halsey tells all the Spartans exactly what the story was when they got a little older. And what was interesting was all the Spartans kind of like, accepted it. And they understood like their 
because like the, the conversation that Halsey has with Chief about like because they actually have a talk and she explains why she did this and what the whole point was. And I thought that was a very good scene for the most part. But and that scene that she has with him is essentially what she does with all the Spartans, like at the same time. And Chief and the lore, and this, like I said, I know this is not all lore accurate. But Chief in the lore is the one that steps forward and says, I understand and I accept it. And basically when he does that, everyone else accepts it because he's like the head of the fuck, I was about to start cursing, head of the damn Spartan program. Um, because at the end of the day, it's like that's the most important thing. Like he he's the leader. He's the most emotionally like composed. And he's the one that's like really putting that forward. But the whole thing about this, this whole situation that I kind of, was I'll make this connection before we start asking your guys' opinion about this. But so what I think is going to happen, I said this on Jill Kill before we even got on the camera, is I think they're going to take the Kai story arc of telling her this because she's so emotionally connected. Is In the lore, there was a book about a Spartan, that a girl Spartan, just like Kai, that literally had left. And I think it was based off of like Linda, which is a part of the blue team, um, who she's mirroring uh, in this storyline, that she leaves and she's going to go seek out her parents and essentially they find out and i think this is actually lore accurate i could be wrong but the flash clone did die for her and essentially the flash clone is like alive and like they're a happy family and she realizes like they moved on and like and she's just like i there's no place for me here and she goes back to the unsc basically like interesting that would be if that and I could like I said I could be wrong I feel like when I it was a long time ago since I read like that aspect but that was an interesting story like that would be interesting if they did that for a Kai because then that would expand her character that would make me interested and be like the emotions you're feeling make sense to me instead of her like the little like don't you ever like wonder why you don't ask why or like oh we're sisters like all this like weird stuff you're right, giving Kai, <laughs> giving her something like that would be like that's cool, that's interesting, that's emotional. Yeah. Not that other BS that they pour in, like, but like that would be cool. And I kind of want to get your opinion, not just on the Kai like the scene, but even that concept of maybe they do that because that's a lore accurate thing. And that like yeah, you know what, it doesn't have to be worth frame by frame exactly the same, but it would be interesting if they take a concept from the lore and kind of mix it into their own storyline i think that would be interesting in my opinion so angelica i want to get your opinion just on the overall kai Dan told I, I'm, I'm trying to remember was the halsey chief before this or after this it was at it was technically okay. after i just kind of built that in because it kind of connects uh okay together. are we are we discussing that part or should we talk about yeah it? you can do both you can do both yeah so i'll start with the kai part i think the uh, what you said would be actually kind of cool if they, uh, you know, implement that into the story. Um, you know, I think it would be a nice thing for Kai. And I do think Kai is becoming a more important character. So um, I do think, you know, she probably deserves some some arc building um, in this story. Uh, for the, you know, I agree with you. Like, it probably isn't the best idea to tell her, like, after she's been beat the hell up and barely survived. Um, but I did like that Chief was like, hey, I'm going to need you. So, like, you know we need you to be ready to go. Um, Cause I know in the previous episode, the good one, he pretty much told her, you got to sit this one out. And like, I don't know if I could trust you. Um, and this time, you know, he told her the big secret and told you that, Hey, you know, I still want you on the squad. So, you know, that was a good moment. Um, again, one of the better uh, scenes I think in the episode. Yeah, I agree. Uh, how um, would you I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll wait you... until it goes to the second part about. Yeah. Just cause the second part and the last part has like, okay has a lot of like i guess you could say like a mix. i have them in groupings of people that are Perfect. really focused okay. on so so hockey what do you think of that scene i kind of mentioned yeah so i mean I'll, I'll start off with the the kai uh getting her own arc too like like you guys said i mean i think that would be pretty cool um and like you both have said as well um the spartans as the spartans are the best uh characters i think in this including soren but the spartan as the spartans as the spartans are definitely the best characters in uh, you know, in the series, and even the emotional Kai uh, is still, you know, one of my favorite characters. Um, but again, that, like I said, that scene you when know, she's laying in the bed and uh, Chief explains everything, a little weird to tell it right there. Uh, but I do like how 
and I'm not huge onto the lore, but obviously I'm learning as we go. And I talked to both of you, but um, you know, the whole flash clone things are like steal the kids and put the clones in their prey. Like that's messed up, you know? So mm -hmm. um, it goes deeper into the lore of like the evil, but necessary according yeah. to Paul yeah. Yeah. Uh, evil, but necessary ways of the UNSC to make sure that they save humanity or what they think they're doing to save humanity it's cool to see that um again just a little too much emotion for me i get they took out the little emotional chip or whatever but um i i definitely would like to see a little more uh of kai and and honestly i'm i'm now even though the emotion is a little weird i'm now kind of like i don't know if it's excited but i want to see the other spartans when they take out their chip and see how how now they're gonna act i don't know man it's gonna be weird but uh oh, no. oh, I mean, God. they're all gonna do it i guess right yeah. I, I listen i hope so and i hope that they like they realized that by the end of the show like that season like someone on the writers the writing staff is like you know what i think it'd be cool if they just like now they're they have emotions but they still like are composed like i feel like yeah. that'd be cool like, I, 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 I don't want to see i don't want to see them like just be like so like yeah what's up man how you doing yeah. I was like, yeah, what's up? like just chilling like no like no it, they're still soldiers they're still trained to be like soldiers and killing machines essentially like you know and we mentioned that thing like you said it, like a long time ago these spartans aren't like they don't they aren't spartan twos they're spartan threes and fours that's what they that's what these they they're acting like to a certain extent, yeah. or Chief's acting like it at least, where <laughs> he's acting like he's a Spartan three or four. And just to give context to everyone here, Spartan threes are like those that were on Reach, like the game Halo Reach. So they have more emotion to them, like than the regular Spartan twos. Spartan twos are like Chief and his crew originally were like those that were like had emotional chips. They had all these things and they were like bred for war. Spartan threes were like a little more adaption where they gave them more humanity. Spartan fours are like Locke and like all those people who literally have zero emotional holdings. They could do whatever the heck they want. You enlist to be a Spartan yourself, like all these other things. So it's like, it's a little different. Um, and chief, right. And the Pablo Shriver is like a Spartan four right now. He's not even like a Spartan two or a three in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's like a weird, interesting. So let's go to the next part where it gets to more politicking. Halsey is getting axed from being the head of the Spartan program. Um, and basically this whole scene gets premised with the first that happens with the conversation. And we kind of mentioned this last segment with, you know, chief and Halsey or have that conversation like straight up about, you know, like this, the reason why I'm doing all this right is because I'm trying to protect humanity for the future and, and evolution of humanity is not going fast enough. And I needed to basically tilt the speed faster so that we can adapt and become stronger right because there's going to be forces out there like the covenant that will show up and wipe us all out unless we're all adapting together faster and that's essentially what her, her argument was and now this is where we start getting some real interesting stuff some real really high cgi me methods method acting we got going on here so in this conversation because this is what they're going into now the the whole um story arc of because halsey obviously is the head of the spartan program and it's a war cry this is like pretty messed up you're abducting kids and you're putting them with flash clones and they're dying and you're abducting when they're seven and they're becoming killing machines some of this stuff and this is where they're kind of jumping the gun on a lot of things it's kind of escalating fast where she's now kind of getting put on put on like on full stop about like hey you did a lot of messed up things in these programs without approval for the most part for not doing all these things without approval of the UNSC to a certain extent. And so now you're kind of getting paid the piper because now the top tier like admins of the UNSC are now saying we need someone because they kind of knew about it and said we need someone to kind of throw under the bus when this stuff starts getting into the public. And so they're saying, okay, Halsey's a perfect thing to throw under the bus. And obviously the admiral who uh, is like, perfect because now well, they wanted throw, to throw the admiral under the bus yeah they were just gonna like, throw her under the bus she's like well she's like well listen i have a perfect person to throw <laughs> under the bus so someone who i don't like and they're starting to throw halsey under the bus and this whole thing conversation gets to a really really interesting spot where they're sitting in 
on Halsey being interrogated by a someone from Oni, which is a you know basically if you don't know Oni is a uh, is is behind the scenes like the CIA kind of the UNSC. They're like the the secret messed up people that are with UNSC. Oni is like a classic. I mean, they're messed up, but so Oni is basically investigating her and like, oh, let's go into all this messed up things. And at the same time, you are seeing Captain Keys and the, and the ad, Admiral are in the room, but they're talking like they're not there. And you're thinking to yourself like, all right, what what's the purpose? And then you see a cut scene where they're sitting in the table with things on their on their heads like this. Yeah, and, and they're like, okay, okay, so they're actually holograms. They're doing some Luke. Skywalker stuff you're hologramming into that room so you can see what's happening but you're not there right well okay some sci-fi stuff going on pretty pretty average like I've seen that stuff That's she cool. walks she walks in right and they're like oh yeah. they're like oh this is getting intense I, I like this is a really good show <laughs> like getting intense here all of a sudden you know Miranda walks into the same room as them and then you're wondering and you're like you? and they're like oh why is she here like they're like why is she here right now she shouldn't be here and you're sitting there like, wait, Miranda was on the same place as Chief and, uh, <laughs> and Dr. Halsey. Like, why? Why is How she, did she there? get there? How she, if she, maybe she's like also doing her own thing and then she's teleporting in the same room. She's in the same room as that Captain Keys and the Admiral because right down the damn hallway is where they're sitting in this thing like that. So they could have easily. Like the U- UNSC does not have like, a police station. You don't have, you don't have a plexiglass window. Plexiglass, box, like box they room, needed a like hologram down the hall. Station, like <laughs> every police station on freaking planet Earth has a plexiglass window you can stand behind so that the witness can't see you looking at them, but you can clearly see them. You don't have that, and this scene made me, made, like, it just made my stomach it's cringe. Grow. It's it the made cringe, cringe, because like it was like they have to hit their quota. Your quota of cringe. You didn't have. Master Cheeks this episode, you didn't have kids kissing. You didn't have that, but you had to have this. You didn't have the Superman punch, but you had, you had to have Superman something. punch, but you had this cringeworthy scene of just sitting there like in the next room over because you needed to have some CGI sci-fi stuff, which and to be honest, Mars Man Gaming Crew, we could do that scene. We we could <laughs> we could have we could have had we could hologram it. <laughs> like Jelly Kill and Hockey could just sit there like this. And I can tell him right next to I can tell, I can right tell him probably you guys in my room with me, like in a CGI music <laughs> Premiere Pro, I could have done that. Like you're you're getting you're 90 million. Yeah, 90 can, million can I just say the worst part? Like, right. Can I just say it to your your yeah, scenario? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The previous episode, Captain Key says, I don't want Miranda a part of any of this. So oh, they I leave the me. door unlocked. She walks right in, sets herself guards? up. There's no guards there, like you watch yeah, it. Yeah, and they're not the locked. Two, the top and two she's people. not. She's part of it now. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. And like that's the scene where Halsey tells Chief everything, but she leaves out who knew, which I do think which, again, it, it leaves an deal. important yeah. scene, but they add the cringiness to it for no reason. This and so hockey, you have anything on this? Just because we can keep, we'll keep going into this one. Yeah, I mean, you guys again, you guys hit it over all and. We're all in agreement here. I mean, that was one of the one of the cringiest parts. The, the, my cringiest parts at the yeah, end. Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, so, really, don't that, worry. Don't I mean, worry. We'll it, was, it was just so. Again, the story that Halsey told Chief was pretty crazy, right? Um, you know, the background of everything. So I thought that part was cool, but like the whole CGI, they could have like had anything. They could have done anything other than than pretty much that, and done anything other than have Miranda there. The one part that I didn't get, though, was that that was Oni. I didn't put that together um, because what I know Oni from is like the Oni Warthog or like the Oni tanks in, uh, in, uh, you know, the video game, which I thought was cool. So I didn't know that part. I guess that adds a little coolness. My rating is still, you know, (laughs) rating. (laughs) The Oni thing doesn't put it up there, but that that's kind of cool. I I didn't know. I didn't put that together, the Oni thing. So, but other than that, yeah, I mean, uh, the scene was uh, pretty much irrelevant, other than Halsey telling Chief, uh, you know, the backstory. Now, yeah, now essentially, right after this, um, uh, Halsey gets gets axed right as the head of the Spartan program, and this is where uh, this is where I get kind of confused because we we get from Captain Keys saying, uh, you know, I don't want I want Miranda off. 
right? This, I want her out of this entire situation. I don't want her near it. They have this that converse, confrontation last episode. I think it was last episode, the episode before. Last episode where she's like, oh, I can't believe she's taking me off. Like thinking it was her mom that did it. And Captain Key's like, no, nope, you're too close. And she's like, she realizes he did it. And he's like, that's an order. You're off. Okay. Add some tension, some problems between mom, her daughter and, and father. Okay. Interesting. Very next episode. Who's who's replacing Halsey? Miranda. What? 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 How do we get to that? How do we get to that? That conversation, that tense filled conversation between daughter and father, and to now Miranda's leading it. We're on green. He's in charge Miranda's of Spartans. Leading. He's in charge of Spartans now. You're out. Like what? What? That that is one impressive climbing the corporate ladder. I'll tell you because you go from being basically kicked off to going back to language therapy to now being head of the Spartan freaking program in one in half an hour. Right? Is insane. Right. But and that's and maybe I'm just dreaming too much into this, but it's just kind of like it just doesn't make sense. It's like your writing is just they just like find things to add in like spice. Like, like, oh, who would who would who would Halsey be annoyed is now leading it? Let's yeah. just give her daughter. Because you know, they know the daughter would like she would never give her daughter the upgrade. Like, you know, like just something like that. Like it was just so like you're adding a spice to this like plethora of, of rap like it's just like i, I don't understand it. it it just doesn't make sense to me i get annoyed by it by thinking about it my stomach curls i just i don't know it, it gets me annoyed thinking about because you know what we're not we're not professional writers here but i think we would be able to write a more sure, intriguing like i could be after watching yeah. the show i, feel like I, I, I honestly good. feel like i i could write my own screenplay and be like i think i could do a more successful job at doing a Halo TV show and writing make things that make sense. Like I'm not even saying like I could write a, like everything, but like something that makes sense in story writing itself. And you know, it, it's just a kind of it, I don't understand that one. But anything for you guys about that scene before we get to the the last sections? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll make it quick. I, I think you know I've actually liked Miranda. I think Miranda's kind of been moving on my list yeah. the last yeah, she, three episodes. But I agree better. with you. Uh, this show is is the weirdest pacing. Um, as well. We don't talk about the pacing enough. At times we feel like we're moving at light speed. Um, but then also at times I feel like we're stuck in mud. It, it's the strangest dynamic. It, it, the pacing is very strange. Like you feel like, okay, you're trying to create this dynamic tension between Miranda, her mom, Miranda and her dad. Um, but at the end, I mean, Miranda, and we'll go into, I actually, I think a cooler part, which I thought the interrogation was cool outside the cringe fest, uh, you know, cgi stuff but uh you know like her becoming in in, in charge of the spartans I, I just don't really get it. it makes sense for the admiral because and and it probably should have enforced this a little more like the admiral wants to control miranda um because that would make more sense that would make See, more um but like again sense. they just it feels like just missed opportunities they just don't write that in it's yeah. just like you, you should make the admiral more as scheming yeah. as Halsey is. Like, I actually like, like that little scheme dynamic. Like, hey, you're not going to prison, but I'm going to put you in a lab outside of this area. That's fine, and that's why I was yeah, okay like with that made the scene. Sense. I was yeah. okay with the scene because you felt that this this building, like, oh, they don't really like each other. Like from the very beginning, you could tell, like, yeah, they don't like each other at all. And like Halsey had the one up on her on the admiral because, like, all right, well, Lord Hood uh, has my back. And they're like, crap. Like, Lord Hood has your back. I can't do it. Yeah, then they Lord failed Hood. that mission, and now she kind yeah, of and now she's got the, uh, I outsmarted yeah. you. And now Halsey's like, all right, now I got to outsmart you. And, and that's fine. That's that's good parts of politics, because I'm okay with that stuff. But it's just like, write it in there where it makes sense. It's just like, it's just they didn't do that. And, and I agree with you. Make it so that the, the Admiral is really controlling Miranda and that's why she's really pushing Miranda. Like, yeah. And I, and you can get a sense that that's what it's about. Like, yeah. You know, they just don't like, I, they, it's like, they, it's like they're waiting for like some big reveal. Like, wait, the Admiral doesn't love Miranda. It's just like, she's trying to use her. We all know she's using her, but like build that in. Like, like you're just like, you're waiting for this big reveal. Like, Oh, like oh, Miranda finally got a shot. And all of a sudden the Admiral is going to be like, I've been using you all along. Like, <laughs> Oh my God! I can't believe that just happened. Like, we all know that that's what's happening, but just like write that in a little more. Like, yeah, Miranda doesn't need to know that she's being used, but like, do it like 
I am controlling the Spartan program because I am putting the people who I want there, right? Yeah. That would make more sense. But let's jump into the last 20 minutes because we're, 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 we're doing, talking a lot here. So I have the scene between Halsey and Miranda, a little scheming going on because, you know, Halsey's got to get, get a clap back. So Halsey is right before apparently she's getting sent, sent to Azkaban. And so Halsey is like, all right, I got to bring Miranda in here and I got to try to find a way to scheme, scheme some more. So has this whole heartfelt scene. Miranda can kind of pick up on the fact that this was a bunch of bull, but she kind of gets tricked a little bit. And Halsey does some crying. She has some like technology where she basically uses her lens as a camera um, and basically now can like kind of access kind of, to the lab. They get access to the lab, which yeah. is, is what she wanted to begin with. Um, and essentially, like, she scout schemes Miranda. Miranda didn't really see it coming, out schemes the Admiral, and now she has access to the lab, even not necessarily being there at the moment. And the f- funniest thing to me, and I thought this was hilarious, uh, was the the pedophile assistant of, of hers basically was like, oh, I created the entire, you know, security system of fleet comm. There's no way, it, according to anyone, can break through. <laughs> and literally in a... In a Five air minutes. Cortana broke through the entire thing. It was like, do you want me to fix the the problem I found when I was in here? He's like, there's no problems with it. Like, you know, there there is. That was cool. That was fun. I thought that was like a kind of a little good scene there because like the pedophile needs to get clapped a little bit more there. Um, (laughs) But basically, I thought that this was an interesting scene. I I didn't mind it. I thought that, you know, Halsey's a schemer. You know, she... Miranda knew it exactly from the beginning. And I kind of like Miranda because she's kind of becoming the more like like in touch with reality to a certain yeah. extent. Yeah. I, I Miranda in the very beginning and you mentioned this or guys are already mentioned this already where like Miranda was like becoming my least favorite. And all of a sudden now she's becoming more like smarter. And I'm like, thank you. Like someone actually thinks for a second. Um, like she realizes like you're, you do, you don't mean any of this stuff. You're just saying this for some reason. And she called it right at the beginning, very beginning, but I kind of want to get your input on this before we get to the final section. Um, where would you guys think of this, like this mother daughter? Cause I, I remember at the beginning, I said, this is stupid. Like I thought this, this rivalry between mom and daughter was dumb. And it was kind of like the mommy wasn't there. Austin powers, like song, like it just felt like it was just like, you're just mad because your mom's not there all the time. Yeah. Just, that's what this is all things about. But it kind of seems more like your mom's a conniver and you're kind of like, you don't care about anything. Except your your research and you're yeah. conniving and you're gonna do your, whatever you want to get there, and I kind of didn't mind the scene, so I kind of wanted to get your input before we get to the last part. So, uh, Angelica, what did you think about this scene? This yeah, this- I mean, you described it pretty well. I'll just say this: uh, strong scene. Um, I think Halsey's well written so far in the show. Um, one of the more well written characters, and I, like I said, Miranda's moving up my list. They're doing a better job of writing her. Um, so to me, overall strong, uh, uh, scene and probably one of the better dialogues. Yeah. So hockey, what'd you think? Yeah, I'm in agreement. Um, good dialogue, her being able to, um, kind of get that access to the lab was pretty sneaky. I thought it was pretty cool. And yeah, like you said, that weirdo, uh, you know, getting pedal, pe- yeah, pedal man and everything, you know, pedal man, yeah. on him, one of the best characters, you know, um, she's smart and she's she has a little bit of that that's you know sting personality where she says a few things and it makes you you know laugh a little bit but but that's what that's so, the best part because that's what cortana was that's why like cortana and chief was always a good di- dynamic because she yeah. barely says anything and then when he does say one thing it's like a a sly comment and then she's always talking more often but she always talks in sly comments so you're like okay so these two people are perfect and that's why Gosh. it's just more disheartening about why Chief is so different, but she's exactly yeah. the way she's supposed to be. And you're yeah. like, imagine you actually got the two characters the right, then this show would automatically be better because you're getting the two main characters exactly what they're supposed to be. Um, but let's talk about the last part where, so this is a pretty big, pretty big portion of the last 20 minutes where it's this thing that's going on where Chief is just constantly thinking about Maki and what she was saying about the artifact like talking about the artifact and then you know miranda is always engaging with maki now and, and all of a sudden now chief is in that room with them and he's starting to feel like like he's getting more like restless and he's getting more 
in pain over like the fact i guess he's not touching this artifact oh the artifact's up doing something it, to him it's doing it's something him, like it's dying. making him yeah it's making him dying or something like along those lines and and so maki like you know being smart i mean she pulled she did some smartness here and was like the artifact's killing you and you need to touch it like it's like you need to touch the touch this and uh it may not kill you um yeah, you want to touch, oh. touch it a little more and so you know john's like you know i and, and he kind of realizes like so we're identical like because then miranda says hey you're you know you and you and her are literally the closest in gene code i've ever seen ever like yeah. you and one billionth of a person can ever match to the same way that you two are um and i was like oh okay i guess like you're using the blessed thing whatever so they're identical i guess they're close in gene code so john's like well you know I, that means I can be touching this and I can do exactly what she does. And Miranda says probably the smartest line in the entire show says, what if, what if she's trapping you? Like, what is this? What is she's setting you up. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's just setting your ass up. Like, and he's like, well, no. I, I need know. to know. That's I what he said. I need to know. I need to know because I'm emotional. I'm not Master Chief. And then <laughs> and Miranda's like, well, you got me there. I guess, you, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, and so... Hopefully we'll get fired. <laughs> yeah, so... So they go off, and now John's getting, he's getting ready, doing like the you know Indiana Jones, like I gotta, I gotta touch this <laughs> the right way, I gotta touch this the right way type of thing. And Rand is like, okay, let's let's go this slow, right? Chief full fully grasps it, and now all of a sudden every everything is now running through his head, and all of a sudden Maki, who's about to, who she was about to slit the uh, the guard. Like she was ready about she's about to go. Yeah, finger, the lady watching about to go yeah, with finger, the finger, you know, the finger, laser. Finger, finger, finger guns, and she was at the slitter. All of a sudden, she just starts gets hit with that connection. She, yeah, she gets hit with that connection. She goes into a whole other state, right? At the same time, Halsey's watching this entire thing fold because she has yeah. now access lab. She, Maki's in a whole other state. She's in a whole other state, and all of a sudden, the big reveal, the final portion. Boom. We're on the Halo ring. Boom. We're on the Halo ring. We're there. We're standing on it. And granted, I'll tell you this, seeing a Halo ring was a mixed mixed bag for me because you have, it was cool because you're, you had the ring effect. Like you saw the ring behind you. And you're like, that's cool. You see the greener. You're like, this is literally what the Halo ring looks like. like they did a good job. But one thing they're missing, and I think we all can agree, no halo music there's zero they, like they have a variation of the halo music that bastardized it's, version. it's bastardized version and it's like a if i'm making an equivalent here and i thought about this as i watched it it was like trying to trying to make remake the battlefield theme song but in a more horrible <laughs> way like they did in battlefield 2042 where yeah. they just took sounds and they said all right let's just turn let's this just Let's just turn yeah, up the sound screeching cats. Let's let's add that screeching cat sound with the background of Battlefield. Let's turn that up a little. And let's this is the new Battlefield theme. And that's what that this felt like. It felt like like it felt like they're of a guitar. Like just yeah. blast that. Electric guitar, and electric boom. guitar, bam, blast that. And then like in a very faint in the background, just put the oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. and you're like, bam, oh, he's like, what? Like I'm like I said, like what? What am I? Oh, what? What is? What the hell is that? And this is talking to a guy who owns like every Halo album in existence. I'm sitting here like, what? What? Like, oh my god! Like, what? What am I listening to? Like, and it was gross. It was gross. And then I just to top it off, because you can't you can't have a Halo episode, TV show episode without at least two cringy things to happen. Right, because quota that's the quota you have to have two cringy things happen in one episode, or else you don't get the 90 million. Right, that's really what Paramount said. So, you already got one. Here's the second one Chief go walk is walks up to Maki because now they're both in this uh, stratosphere. He's doing, <laughs> he's just doing like, oh, 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 I, I can't even like fathom, I can't even fathom like Maki's like, like being the actress like well they both got the love eyes right they all got they both love get eyes. the love eyes all you see is chief all you see all you see is chief grabs her cheek yeah grabbing her this cheek grabbing and they're staring at each other she's just staring at each other looking around and like then looking this. around 
just and and honestly it just made it just made me want to stop watching the episode at that point because like I, it, the cool part of the halo ring was cool and then that weird just we and, and now it just confirms that like Langella kill is a blessed one. I, he knows he just knows, knows. the future I of did. what's gonna happen and we can all now point and say well we're gonna see some master cheeks and some maki cheeks and they're gonna be clapping because they're here clapping. i'm not i'm now i am now 98 percent. i'm 98 percent sure we are gonna get we're gonna get some we're gonna get some a love scene now i'm 98 percent they're gonna be clapping dude like it's just i'm 98 percent sure dude I'm 98. Oh my god! I, no. I mean, I'll take this. I'll take. Let me. I hate. This is supposed to be the big reveal, the uh. the, the colossal reveal of the Halo ring. And again, it just feels like a letdown. Like, how could this be possible that I see the Halo ring, and like I'm just like that didn't hit that hard. Um. We see the ring, like you said, the look of it looked cool. And then they, you know, you hear the music and you're just wondering, you know, I actually thought the music was better when they first said Halo Ring. You know, when uh, Miranda and Kai were like yeah. trying to decipher and they were like, oh, you know, Halo. A it's a blessed ring. Oh, Halo. Like, yeah. Ran, and like, when you heard yeah. that music, that felt more Halo music than what we just saw here. And like, yeah. you know, the breaking news that I know people are going to say, yeah, uh, there was, are a couple of things like, this, like yeah. Microsoft cut a deal with Martin O'Donnell. They, they settled their issues about the music. Um, I think it's a little harder now to say, okay, hey, take the music out from what you put in and put in actual Martin O'Donnell's music. Um, I think that would be more for future seasons. Yeah, I think um, the next season. There's got to be a this. better route to bastardize the songs than what they put in this moment. Um, they had, there has to. And then, like you said, to top it all off, I thought they were going to kiss. I, I really did. And I was like, well, this is the coup de gras on my john the the john persona i mean this is the this and i think it's going to happen at some point i, I really do think they're going to get feelings for each other um and i, I really do I, I i'm like well i don't know what percent i gave last week but i am at at least 98 percent that we are getting that by the by the end of this show well um and, and well, it's gonna uh, make me sick honestly yeah it, it's gonna get me sick to my stomach and it kind of like confirms like kind of like multiple bolt takes that we had from the previous episode and I, i'm not gonna go to a whole nother bolt takes segment because this can go on for three hours if we did that again but but essentially my bolt take and i think it's still on point and it's gonna happen is that maquis gonna take the place of the arbiter and it was kind of like it's kind of a weird feeling it was like when the writers of the of, of the show said, "All right, well, we played, we we looked at Halo Two and Halo Three, and there's something missing that we wish we had. The Arbiter Chief relationship. We we just want to have them have sex. Like 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 <laughs> like why can't like why, why, why is there not enough intimate why, love? Why, why is there not, not enough intimacy between them? Why is there not enough intimacy <laughs> and, cl- and she clapping between <laughs> Chief and Arbiter? So no, let's not awesome. have Chief. Uh, as an alien, to Arbiter, having, right? let's as not a have make him make love to Arbiter uh, as an elite. Let's have him make love to a Dude, female that Arbiter. Be, that would be the icing, and on that would be the best thing we should do for this because that makes more sense. Because there, that was one thing I when I saw Chief and I saw Arbiter Chief back to back when when they fought against the Flood, I, they should have been face to face and naked. Like, listen, listen. That's, that's what should have happened. That's what that's what I thought we should have had about that one. If they actually imagine they did Master Chief and Elite, yeah, <laughs> that'd be well. That means they they would be including everybody, even though we're including see, hockey. We're including mean, non-human that, species. With that, point. yeah, what that would mean was that they actually would have alien species on a TV screen. That yeah. would actually mean they have to include a character that's yeah. an elite and actually have that's, conversations. That's why you can't, about them. you can't do it. That's why it's and, impossible. Uh, and, 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 you know, the CGI, I can't even fathom the CGI of having a sex scene with Chief and Arbor. That'd be freaking, you need tw- 10 million a lot for 10 seconds of that. You so don't you, let's, let's get rid of that. Let's just have a female character. That I, I, listen, it. man, can I just say, no. like, we're all, we're busting jokes and stuff, but, like, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I hope like, I'm, like, I'm, really, I'm overreacting. Really hope. I really hope that I'm yeah. just overreacting but, like, here. Damn, like, can someone, can someone talk me off this bridge? I really think it's happening. Like, I really think it's happening. 
it's it's honestly scary to think that that like if you were to tell me like before the show even happened that like so there's going to be an arbiter like character that's female and they're clapping cheeks with cheek like that's happening like imagine you told me that in the beginning of the show i would have been like i'm not watching this garbage i'm like, like i'm not watching that like that that's not getting me excited for this paramount plus show because i'll tell you i got mad excited when they first said you know paramount plus halo's do halo show's coming and I was like, okay, okay, I'm excited. I want to see it. And then they said, all right, well, it's a silver timeline. And I'm like, I don't really know what that means. And then they said, well, it's a brand new story. And I was like, oh boy. And then all of a sudden, then we're seeing even the more. Then I started seeing Facebook trailers thing. of like the of Maquis and like, oh, Miranda's now not a soldier. She's a scientist. You know, uh, you know, Chief takes his helmet off. I hear that. Oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh, no, I was getting hit like, oh, oh get hit with all these new things that I would look afraid of was going to happen. And boy, is it chain line? Like it's just chain reaction, domino, domino theory to a maximum. And like I said, we rag on this episode because we like making jokes about it. Now what's crazy is after everything we just said about ragging on the episode, it's still better than episode two and episode three combined. Yeah. Like that's what's crazy guys is that this was better than those two easily. Like now, last thing before we go, guys, what are your thoughts on kind of the, um, and I don't know. I want to tell the audience what I saw in the preview. For oh, the next week. oh, I even watched um, the preview. I, I it was that. a full scene of, of, uh, oh my God, I, of Quan with the mystics. And so I have a feeling next episode is going to be a full Quan. I have a oh, feeling wow. it's going to be a full Quan episode or at least 50%. So, so to give people it. heads up, then it might be an episode you could skip. Like, it, it could be. It <laughs> like, could be maybe we I'm don't even a bold do take. <laughs> bold take, we might just not do it then. We might um, a week. <laughs> we might just take the week. You're like, no, what? We're, we're all right. And then, and really quick, because we, we just went off on a tangent there. I didn't actually get to talk about the last part real quick. And I, I just want to yeah, say. Go- the one thing I didn't really like the view of the halo ring. And I know you guys like that part, you know, you didn't like the, them almost kissing and the music, but I'm with you guys. It was super weird, but I thought the visual, and I know you guys did too. I thought the visual of the ring like that hyped me up. Yeah, and I know. Listen, I, I agree with you. I agree. Yeah. I, listen, see, this is the whole point is like the whole show is based on the ring. It's yeah. based on the ring, and that's like the whole thing. Is like when you see that, and we're I and I don't think we either. I think, I think we agree. Like it was a yeah, cool yeah. part. It just was deep. It's just like the like momentum. Like, yeah, it was like it's on purpose. It. it was like it feels purpose. on purpose. And then all and like of a sudden, we, yeah, yeah, it's just like the music down. Then Chief holding Maki's face down, and it's just like <laughs> every good part of that scene just gets downgraded because you keep adding these stupid things. And I'm just hearing loud, like, guitar sounds in the background of a Halo theme. Like, like it just feels like, it's just like, you're having such a good part. Yeah, like, just shut up. Shut it's up. Like, let it, like, just I, I, honestly, show the ring. Silent. Shut up. Let it be Don't silent. move. Yeah, Look at the silent. ring. <laughs> silent and have just cheap and mocking, just like, just like staring. And end it. End the show. End this, end this, yeah, end the episode. Mm-hmm. Like, don't even have them like this or the bear, bear, bear. like any of that scrap. Just have just them standing still looking up. My God. I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. I'm with and, you. Yeah. Like, and I agree with you, man. Like, cause you know what? That was the whole, when I said the non spoiler section, the ending made everyone hyped because and I was like, wow, that was, this is a cool scene because they literally, I think if you took out that scene, then this episode would be on par with other ones that were like horrible. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the point is that they finally did what we, everyone was waiting for, which was show the ring. Right, yeah. show us the ring, and we finally did it, and it elevated the episode bigger than what it should have been. Um, and that's the whole point, though, is that like you just have these opportunities, and I feel like that's been the theme of this show, is you have yeah. opportunity after opportunity, and you miss out on it every yeah. freaking time. It's like you you find a way to screw yourself over, and to get Halo fans like us to be like annoyed. Like now, granted, granted, and I said this in the non spoiler section. You can disagree with us, and I understand if you do, and you're like, no, talk you know, us off guys, the ledge, man. You guys, you guys I'm are up on the ledge or whatever. Like, fine, tell me and us 
Amara's main gaming channel. Talk tell us off the ledge. Tell us why you think that's the case. Tell us, you know, give us your input. I, I, I'd love to hear it because I, I just think that me being a Halo fan for since the age of seven, six years old, I've been knowing Halo for the same way for such a long time. And I just, I don't like seeing it so different. I don't like seeing it not what Halo is supposed to be. Um, and so, and I tell myself every time I turn on the episode, it's Silver Timeline. I tell myself every time, and it still doesn't fix it. You know what I mean? It just still doesn't make me feel good. Yeah. Um, but any parting words from you guys before we close out the show? Nope. Now, three episodes well, left. Let's, uh, give Maybe or take. we'll get a fight I, I said, I put out. I put out a bet last time and said over under five cheeks the remaining parts of the season. I'm down. That, that bet is still on. All right. Oh, well, there was no cheek. So you got three now, episodes. This three episodes. Guess what? It's only proven now that you're going to get a chief maki naked scene. That's that's two cheeks right there. And let's just say you get two sex scenes. That's four cheeks. Nah, I, I think this is, build. this is going to be something closer. that builds. I'm saying yeah. be something that builds. it's getting closer and closer. And all I'm saying is that cheeks be clapping and flapping. <laughs> that's, flappy dappy, flappy dappy. I, I will. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what how anyone can defend it. No, nope, there's no there's no defending it. But I honestly, I don't think I don't think there's gonna be a sex scene this season. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Haki. I, I, I'll go. I, they got to build it up. They got to build it. They're, they're they're creating that love tension. You could feel, mm. start to feel it. They're they're creating it, mm. and then they got to you know like a like a drama yeah. like a drama. They got to build and mold it for a while, and then that's has when this show that's ever shown really you any right pacing. They they have not done anything. No, but they might have you know a scene where they like. They just gotta. Next, they just gotta episode, finish me like off. Enemies, they they gotta just finish the stabbing. Just, they gotta finish the stabbing. Weird. They gotta just finish the stabbing right in my chest of Master Chief being completely different. They just gotta keep digging until I'm just an empty husk, and then that's when they'll finish me off. With Listen, the I'll tell you. I'll that's tell you when they'll happen. finish me off. I'll tell you, I'll that's what's gonna happen. They're just gonna keep jabbing. And then they're gonna just finish <laughs> they're, they're just gonna have sex <laughs> on your dead body. <laughs> if if the next episode starts off with Chief and Maki naked in the bed and like Maki's like you know twiddling Chief's chest, like, would, would you love me if I'm still a butterfly? I'm done. I'm turning yeah. it off. It's over. I'm not watching. It's over. I'm, I'm, You're I'm done. Not, I'm, I'm done with this it. round table. I'm not. I'm yeah, done. I'm, yeah. I, I'd, I'd rather I'd arm, rather have a round table. Me? I'd rather have a round table discussing the game of the year candidates in yes. freaking May than talk about. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, game of the year candidates next week. Like, then talk, then talk about the show. If that that's how the episode starts, the game of the like, year, the Golden Ring. Like, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we go from tangent there, but uh, it had to be said. So, thank you everyone for watching us rant and ramble about you know possibly twiddling Chiefs chest hairs. But I really appreciate you guys coming out to to support us. Um, if you haven't done so so far, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. As I mentioned in the earlier part of the show, we do a lot of game streams, a lot of gaming content, a lot of fun, as you can tell here. So please tune tune into our next video and next stream uh, coming up very soon. But thank you guys for watching. This is Marsman Gaming. We're signing off. Peace.